Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells us about Masitat bint Fir'aun. The hairdresser of the daughter of Fir'aun. And when we say the daughter of Fir'aun, we're talking about someone who is filthy just like her father. Someone who is taking advantage of the dhulm of her father. And Masitat bint Fir'aun, you want to see reality. We see here the working woman, the single mom. She used to do, literally her only job was to dress the hair of the daughter of Fir'aun. Every night she goes to her children, the only time she sees her children is when she goes and she takes to her children the food for the day. That's the only time she sees her children. The working single mom. And Mashitat Fir'aun, this hairdresser, she had embraced Islam in secret. And when she was combing the hair of the daughter of Pharaoh the king, the comb fell to the ground. And then she automatically, unconsciously picked up the comb and said, Bismillah, in the name of Allah. And then the daughter of Fir'aun said, Allah, Abi, are you saying Allah, my father? And she said, no, Allah, the God of your father and yourself and me. And the girl said, do you want me to tell my father you said this? And this woman whose name we don't even know said, yes, go ahead. And she became angry. She went to her father and said to him, father, this woman worships another God beside you. He said, what? She know another God beside me? Who is there? Call her to me. And they called her to him. And then she came and stood, a woman, a woman, brothers and sisters, in front of this great Pharaoh. And he said to her, Are you saying you have a Rabb besides me? Because Fir'aun used to say, Ana Rabbukum al -a'la. And Fir'aun used to say, as the Quran says, Qala hal alimtu lakum ilahin ghayri. Did I ever teach you there's another God besides me? Because he has to teach his people about God. And this is exactly what he asked this lady as well. Did I teach you that do you know there's another God besides me? And so the woman said with the same bravery that she said to this young girl, she said to the Fir'aun himself, Allah is my Lord. He said, who is Allah? He said, Allah Rabbi wa Rabbuk. Allah is my God and yours. Yes, when she was cornered and put in the place, when she had to answer, she answered. She's got nothing going for her to get her out of this situation, but she believes in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is how the state of the mu'mins in the past and present are. When they said, Rabbi Allah, Allah is my Lord, they were tortured. But we don't care, because we know what we are heading towards. We know who our Lord is, and we say what we believe. We are not liars. She said, Allahu Rabbi wa Rabbuk. And then he said, what? Bring the chains. They brought the chains. They began to punish her and whip her. Who is your Lord? And she would say, Allahu Rabbi wa Rabbuk. And this Mashtat Fir'aun, this hairdresser had five children. And one of them was still breastfeeding. Now we know, and I want all of us to think about this, especially for the mothers here. You would rather die than seeing your children die. And Fir'aun knows how to torture this woman. He's not just going to kill her. Fir'aun orders the army, his army to go to her home and bring her children in front of her. And you can imagine what those children are going through. Whenever the army of Fir'aun reaches the house, they're thinking it's mom coming home to bring them the food for the night, to spend the night with them. But instead it's the army of Fir'aun coming to drag them out, abusing them, to take them to their place of death. And you know what that's like for a mother. All of her children are dragged in front of her. And they're calling out to her, calling out her name, asking for help, and she can't do anything about it. Will you go back on your faith now? Absolutely not. And so he ordered for them to bring a large container. And then he spilled hot boiling oil into this container. Large container, like a swimming pool. And then he said, bring me all of her children. And they brought them one by one. He said, worship me, I am your God. She said, never. And she was told that she has to throw her own children into the fire. She has to throw her own children into the fire one by one or else acknowledge Fir'aun as her Rabb. She said never. So he brought her first son and he threw him into the oil. In front of her eyes, his meat and his flesh fell off his body and then his bone disintegrated. Then they brought her next son and she was firm, Allahu Akbar. And they burnt him. She could not stop him. And then her third and then her fourth. Then finally her fifth, he was on her arm. And she was about to pull back. She was about to pull back in front of the eyes of all the people. And this is the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. He said when all of a sudden Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from above seven skies made her child or infant speak while he was in the cradle. And he said, Isbiri ya ummi, isbiri ya ummi, innaki ala al-haq. Be patient my mother, you are on the truth. 
Inna Allah qad wa'adaki bi jannah. Allah, Allah has promised you with a great heaven. Keep going, mother. Oh my mother, go forth and drop yourself in. Proceed forward because this punishment of this world is nothing compared to the punishment of the next. And then they threw her son into the boiling oil. Think about that. All of us were children. She still didn't commit kufr. And then she was next. She knew that she was going to die. And then she began to cry. And Pharaoh said, why are you crying? Stop. And she said, I want crying because I want to ask you to do something for me. I don't know if you will do it. He said, ask me for whatever you like. She said to Fir'aun, لَقَدْ حُرِمْتْ I was forbidden in this world from the suhba of my family, from the companionship of my family. فَلَا تُفَارِقْنَا فِي الْآخِرَةِ Don't make distance between us in the Akhirah. So whenever you kill me, take my bones and their bones, فَجَعَلْهُمْ فِي كَفْنٍ وَاحِدٍ Put them in one single kafn. Let us all be buried together. And Fir'aun says, you have that. And so they threw her into the oil. Once she's massacred, her bones are put with her children. And she ended up in Jannah. And what is amazing is that SubhanAllah, we don't even know her name, but the Prophet Sallallahu recorded her plight and narrated it to the Ummah, her courage and bravery, Allah had willed that it would be preserved for the Ummah. Her sacrifice, Allah had willed that the people of Fir'aun might not know of her sacrifice, but it would be remembered and mentioned by the greatest Ummah and the largest Ummah and the world would know of her story and the story of her children and she would become a role model for all of the future Muslim generations. So Allah preserved this story and it is amazing that this story, even though it happened in the for Musa's Ummah, yet it is preserved in our Ummah. And the Iman is of course exemplary and yet it is preserved in our Ummah and it is not preserved in the Ummah of Musa because this story is not mentioned in the Old Testament and it's not found in the Jewish tradition and scriptures. And when we listen to these stories, we think nothing but tragedy, but you know what? The Prophet said, on the night that I went on Isra wal Mi'raj, I smelt a fragrance that was very sweet. Rasulullah confirms to us that when Jibreel السلام, was taking the Prophet وسلم, through the heavens, the Prophet وسلم, smelled a sweet scent. He said, Ya Jibreel, ma hadhi ra'ihatu tayyiba? What is this beautiful scent that I'm smelling? And Jibreel السلام, says, This is the scent, the hanut, as the Prophet وسلم, describes to us when the person dies, when the righteous soul dies. The angels come, the angel of death approaches him in the long hadith of Al-Bara radiallahu ta'ala an, the angel of death comes to him and he sees the angels coming down from the heavens with his kafan from Al-Jannah, with the smell of Hanut from Al-Jannah, the perfume of Al-Jannah. And they say to that soul, or he says to that soul, Ayyatuha nafs al tayyibah O pure soul, Ukhruji ila rahmatillah, come out to the mercy of Allah and his ridwan and his pleasure. Go ahead and come out. It's okay, come out. There is something better waiting for you. And imagine, over 2000 years later, the scent of that hanut from that woman was still sweet. And the Prophet ﷺ could still smell that scent in the heavens. And just know that he who has no one has Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he who has Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in need of no one. And when you truly come to that understanding, you'll realize that yes, sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows you to fall apart. Sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows everything that you can possibly perceive going wrong to go wrong. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only allows you to fall apart because He wants to mend you subhanahu wa ta'ala. He wants to put you back together and He wants to give you something better.